Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a practice problem on both uh, fluid transport and forces. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps a lot. So before we go into the problem, let me just clarify that this is more of a final exam practice problem because it involves both uh, fluid transport and forces, force diagrams and all things force related. So if you're just starting on 7b and you have just seen fluid transport but not uh, forces, then my personal recommendation is to just uh, wait on this problem until you've seen forces and uh, at least force diagrams before you move on. Uh, but if you're practicing for the final exam, then this is uh, the perfect problem because final exam problems are made so that more than one topic is represented per question. So I actually think that this is a very good um, practice for the final exam. So let's just go ahead and read the problem. Uh, so we have our problem statement, which is that we have a cylindrical container and it has some liquid on it. Uh, the liquid has some uniform mass density and it's open to the atmosphere. And basically what we have to do is uh, follow some instructions, A, B, C, and D. And the, the instructions themselves are telling us that if we do absolutely everything right, then we should end up with the uh, Bernoulli equation. So this is one of those problems in which you have the answer, but uh, you basically have to get there, follow this, these steps and get there. It's very common in physics. Uh, so uh, feel free to pause the video in order to copy the instructions. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just follow them to see where we end up. Hopefully we'll get to the Bernoulli equation. So let's just go ahead and see. So the uh, first thing is that we should... Um, so as you can see, I have everything over here in my notes. I have the water tank and I have the highlighted zone. That's really everything that they're giving us. If we do this correctly, we should end up with the uh, correct Bernoulli equation, but we'll see about that. Let's just get started. So consider a thick disc of the liquid, uh, which is this darker blue section, and then what forces act on this fluid disc? Just consider forces in the uh, up, up and down direction. So this is, uh, we're not really being asked to do anything except name the forces. So first of all, we always have gravity. That is something that's always gonna show up by gravity on disc, which is if you have this disc, obviously, you know, this mass is feeling a force by uh, due to gravity on the disc. And, you know, if you've seen forces, we know that this is just the mass of the disc times g, like this. Uh, so that is, you know, the first force. And now there are also two contact forces because we're considering this cylinder over here. So this cylinder has a little bit of a force due to the uh, upper cylinder over here. It's pushing down. And we also have this cylinder over here that's pushing it up. And really, these two compressing it on both directions are also what's keeping it over here in the middle. So let's see, um, so this is, uh, let's just call them above and below. Uh, let's see, um, force by the above cylinder and then force by the below cylinder. So there we go. So now let's see what's next. Uh, let me just, yes, below double L, there we go. Um, all right, so now let's just go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is draw a force diagram for the disc and write down the corresponding equation for the net force. If the fluid is in static, what does the net force on the disc equal? Okay. So part B is very easy. First of all, let's just answer the second question. If the fluid is static, which means it's not moving, what does the net force on the fluid disc equal? Well, if it's not moving, then that just means that if you add all of the forces, then they need to add up to zero because otherwise the disc would be moving up or down. And we know that this is not the case. 
So now we need to draw a force diagram, which is basically just take these three forces and uh, create a force diagram for it. So gravity is always going to be going down, of course, according to this picture. Force by gravity. Uh, the below disc is acting upwards. It's kind of like keeping it, uh, it's pushing it upwards. So we have to draw that. And another thing, this one is pushing downwards. And I'm going to start with this one over here. Because if I'm saying that the net force has to be equal to zero, then this, the force due to this disc and due to this disc are actually different because the force due to B has to equal these two combined. Because if I make this force equal to this force, then we also have gravity that would unbalance the forces and that would make this disc move, which we know is um, not happening. So yeah, this force need to needs to counteract both of these, so this one needs to be bigger than A. Um, so now let's just go ahead and uh, create an equation. Well, we know that the net force has to be equal to zero. That means that the uh, forces going up has have to be equal to the forces going down. So forces going up is just force by B. I'm just going to call it by B. And this is an upwards force, has to be equal to both of the forces going down. There we go. Like this. And um, the problem is not really specifying that we need to substitute this, but let's just go ahead and do that. And then both of these equations could be a final answer because they weren't really telling me to specify anything. So let's just go ahead and do the uh, next part, which is rewrite the mass of the disk, so this thing over here, in terms of the fluid density and the volume of the disk. Write the volume in terms of the fluid container cross-sectional area and the width of the fluid disk. Okay, so let's just do this um, step by step. So the first thing is rewrite the mass of the disk in terms of fluid density. Okay, well, uh, the definition of density, we saw it on fluid transport, is just mass density is equal to mass divided by volume. Um, so if we have to rewrite mass in terms of density, then we just need to do mass is equal to density times volume, and there we go. And now the second part of this uh, part C says, write the volume in terms of the fluid container cross-sectional area and the width of the fluid disk. So volume is equal to uh, area times height. And they are asking me to do this in terms of these two variables. So Y2 minus Y1 per the instructions. So all I have to do is substitute this volume over here. Um, and then this would be my final answer for part C. So now let's see, part D must somehow combine these two together. Let's read it out. Uh, divide your net force equation by the cross-sectional area A using your answer to C and recalling the relationship between pressure, force, and area show that this is the uh, Bernoulli equation. Okay, so the f we have to combine these two and then divide everything by volume. So uh, let's see. All right. So part D, first of all, I'm going to copy this equation. And then this is equal to this term, which is just the mass. Um, rho A Y1. And I also need a G of 
over here. There we go. So now the instructions are asking me divide, divide your net force equation by the cross-sectional area. Oh, okay, so I have to take every single term, divide by area. So these two are gonna stay like this and then this area is gonna go away. So this would be Okay, and then it says recalling the relationship between pressure, force, and area, which is pressure is equal to force divided by area. That is the relationship. Uh, show that this is the Bernoulli equation. Well, we're pretty much there because this is a force divided by area. So this is pressure at point B. This is force divided by area. So this is pressure A, uh, pressure due to A. And then this is just the, uh, the term in the Bernoulli equation, right? This is just a delta y. So our final answer is uh, PB minus PA is equal to rho G. And then this is a delta, this is a delta. So this is just final minus initial, final minus initial. This is from going down A to B is equal to rho G delta Y. And then this is the Bernoulli equation or how we would have, um, if we started with the complete Bernoulli equation and then just us, um, we would have ended up with this. So we do know that this answer is correct and this basically um, is the end of the problem. So this is a little bit of a hard problem because it involves two different concepts. It's a little bit of a mixture between uh, force diagrams, a force equation over here. Uh, we needed to recall this relationship from the first module of 7b, which is uh, fluid transport. And then the final answer is also an equation that we see on fluid transport. Uh, furthermore, this is like a step-by-step -step problem and those ones are usually a little bit harder than problems uh, in which you just get to put numbers on a calculator. But uh, final exam problems tend to be sort of like this. Uh, they always combine two or more uh, modules of 7b and um, you know, they don't always end up with us putting numbers on a calculator. So it is kind of a challenging problem, but I would say it's a very fair problem for physics um, 7b, at least a final example of, of physics 7b. So anyways, I hope that this uh, was a useful video to you guys. Um, leave a like if you think it was useful and if you have any comments, please make sure to leave them below. Uh, your, uh, your suggestions are very useful to us and I'll see you guys on the next video.